Hey guys, welcome to this video series called Troubleshooting Salesforce Error. While I was writing a code, I came across this error. So I thought of creating a simple scenario where I can replicate this issue and share the steps to fix this issue with you. So that way it would be helping you going forward. So this is the error that we have seen. Let's start troubleshooting. So we understand that this is the place where the error is occurring. So let's go ahead and open the debug log first. So I have my debug log open. So let's look for the error that we came across on the UI. The error that we have came across the UI is system dot query exception list has zero rows for assignment to S object. So where it is happening on, it is happening on line number four. So that means there should be a query that query is not able to get the records is what we can understand from this error. So let's look at where exactly this error is happening. This error is happening on the line called trigger dot case triggers. That means there is a case triggers on line number four is what the error is. So let's open the trigger, click on file, open, go to the trigger section, paste your trigger name that you see in the error, open that trigger on line number four is the error. So line number four is this one. What we can understand from this line. This query is basically fetching list of accounts, which has the name as test one, two, three. That is what this query is doing. Now, what I'm doing, once I have the results, I'm assigning to the account record. So just from the syntax perspective, there is nothing wrong in the query that we have written or the assignment that we have done. So object is also matching. Then what is the issue here? The issue is when I run this query in my query editor, let's see the results. If I execute this query, there are no records that have been fetched. Since there are no records, that means there is no account record with name test123. That is why there are zero records that have been fetched from the database. So which would be the obvious case, let's say, if I ask for a specific record, if that is not there, I should not end up showing an error message to the end user, which is of type exception. So it is a runtime error that we are getting where it is not a good UI experience for the user. They do not know what to do with this one. It needs to be handled at the code level. Then how to fix this error? So the, according to the documentation of Salesforce, what exactly says is when you write a query and directly assign to a S object, which is in this case account system is expected that this query would return one record of type account. What is system expecting? If it executes this line, it is expecting one record of type account. If that is not happening, that is where it is throwing a query exception. That is where it is throwing an exception to the UI. Now, how to fix this one at times for a given query system might return records or it might not. In this case, we are getting zero rows because I do not have any account records, which has name is equal to test one, two, three. So in that case, what to do, what we can do here is convert the data type that is there on your left hand side to a list. I'll simply change it to a list, right? So I've changed it and I've saved this trigger. Now, if I go ahead and save this record, let's see what would happen. If I save this record, this time it would be successfully saved. The reason for that is this query has fetched zero records. And this time we are not writing an account as a data type, but we have written it as a list of accounts. So even though this query returns zero records, it is accepted by this variable that we have. And if you look at the debug logs, you will not see any exception, but you see a success status here. So that is how you can fix this error. So if you look at the debug logs, you would not see any exception like we have seen earlier but the number of rows that have been fetched from the database for this query is still zero. We have not fixed the number of records that have been fetched, but we have looked at how the query needs to be handled. Now you might be asking if I directly go ahead and write it this way, will my logic be affected? What you can do is in case if you wanted to check if the records have been present in your list variable or not, what you can do is directly make use of conditional statement and use your concept call dot is empty. Ask the system, is this list variable empty or not? If it is empty, you'll not see anything. 
If it is not empty, you will see this debug statement. If I execute this code, you'll not be seeing anything as a record. You'll not see any debug logs recorded. So what we'll do, we'll also add a else block here. So that way we would understand which piece of a code has been executed here. I'll put an else block and say system dot debug list is empty. So now you will be able to understand whether this list is empty or not, depending on the debug logs that we would be seeing. So if I go ahead and quickly create a new record and click on save, I'll not see an error because it has been properly handled, but in the debug log, I'm interested in which debug statement has been printed. So I'll check this checkbox, which says debug only. And if you see the list is empty. So what does that mean is this query has fetched zero records and that has been assigned to this variable called a of type list of accounts. We have asked the system is this list empty. So is empty is a method that we can use to ask the system a question saying that is this list empty? For that, I've put a not condition here. Not condition is a logical operator. If this is empty, not of that is list is having some records. If that is the case, we are printing the statement saying that list is not empty. If that is not true, we are printing a line saying that list is empty. So since there are zero number of records that have been fetched from the query, it is going into the else block. So this is one way of handling this point, or there is another way to handle this one. It is up to you how you wanted to handle this piece of logic according to your requirement. If you do not want to show the error to the end user, this is how you can handle this one, or you can use the try catch. So I would write a try block inside that try block. I would go ahead and write the earlier code that I have. And if there is an exception, when I will be getting an exception, if the number of records fetched from this query is zero. That is where it would throw an exception, just like how it did earlier. So what I will be doing, I'll be catching that exception. Instead of throwing that exception to the end user, I'm handling it within the code system.debug an exception occurred. You can be specific on this exception that has been occurred. You can write a system dot system exception that query exception here for time being, I'm putting a generic exception here for us to better understand this error. So I've written the try block. Whenever there is an error, it would be going into the catch block. If there are no errors, this line of code would be executed, right? Let's execute it once more and see the debug logs for comparison. Again, I'll populate all the mandatory fields, click on save. My record has been created successfully. That means there are no errors thrown to the end user and no errors been recorded in the debug log. Also the status shows success. If you see here, there is an exception that has occurred, a runtime implementation exception that got occurred, right? So we have handled that exception using our try catch block. So this is the debug statement that I've written on line number 14, an error has occurred. What is the error? This is the error that we have seen on the UI. Either you can do it the first way that we have discussed, either change the account type to list of accounts, or you can use the try and catch block to capture this exception and print it in the debug statement. So that way you would be able to handle it better rather than displaying an error message to the end user. So that is all for this video. If you have liked this content, do like, share, and subscribe to our channel SFDC Quest. That is all for today. Thanks for joining and we'll meet on the next video. Until then, happy coding. Hey guys, if you like this video, do like, share and subscribe to SFTC Quest.